Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is me, the Joker for today. Happy Halloween to every one of you guys. You didn't think I was going to do it. You probably didn't think I was going to actually do it, but I did. But welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show, Heart of Hollywood Magazine, Hollywood episode, Halloween style. That's what we do. Yes, for everyone that's actually tuning in right now, thank you guys so much for actually tuning in with us because today is going to be a great show. Just so you guys, it's actually brand new. We always, always give some great exposure for this interview series to music entertainers and in the entertainment industries from actors to models um, to, to more musicians to everyone that's actually contributing to the entertainment industry. Influencers also is involved in influencing positive aspects and inspiration uh, as well too. So if you're a director as well, you'll be part of my show. But welcome everybody, welcome to the Heart of Hollywood Magazine. I have to introduce this gentleman. This is a great time for this gentleman to actually be on because I love his last name. He is, he was a DJ growing up, but he's done a lot in the entertainment industry. He is also very humble in regards to working with independent artists. He is the founder and also he is a director event producer of Hollywood Music and Media Awards. And he's coming up with some awesome, great stuff coming up. I want you guys to stand up. If you're a singer, put the microphone up to your mouth and just scream out, pick me. My man is... Brent Harvey. Let me bring him in. Let me bring him in. Let me bring him in. There he is. How are you, sir? <laughs> I think you're on mute. <laughs> Let me see. I think, are you there? Woo! You scared the <laughs> hell out of me, man. <laughs> Give me a heart attack. Look at you. Oh, John. Oh, my God. Uh, how are you, Rico? Hey, Mr. Harvey. <laughs> how are you, Rico? I am good, sir. How are you? Doing great. Just uh, jam-packed with all sorts of stuff going on right now. Yeah, it's a blessing to be that way. You know, you're doing great things. You're doing really great things, and you deserve every accolade to what you're doing. But I want the world to know exactly in this 25 minutes of fame that we have right now. It's going to go by fast, but we got to pack it all yes, in. It I know you're a busy man. So let's start off, sir. Let's start off, you know, being a DJ. Is not easy, right? You can listen to music, but then it's also about how you play music in front of people in your earlier years. Growing up, sir, tell us about that process and that growing up in the DJ industry. Uh, when when I was a, D, a nightclub DJ, right? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, this was this was. Oh my God, this was a long time ago. This uh, the eighties. Um, okay. And uh, that's that's when the club scene really exploded, late 70s, 80s, early 80s. And um, I was hired by a nightclub chain. Uh, they only had three locations at the time when they hired me. And it grew to 17 locations. And I became entertainment director of the nightclub chain after but I stayed. I stayed with the chain for 16 years. Wow. So so. I was I was uh, I was spinning music. I mean, this was before scratching. You know, this is yes. this is before CDs. This <laughs> this this is all you know vinyl, dude. Yes. It's all vinyl. And uh, yes. and actually, there's a there's a platinum album back there uh, from uh, Jody Watley. MCA Records presented it to me because uh, we helped break Jody Watley as a major solo artist in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, um, Jody Watley. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that that goes back a ways. Uh, <laughs> she was part of the disco band Shalimar. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. So I had a great time. It, 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 some of it I don't remember because I had really a good time. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, but being being the bar star, I mean, you know, we had our marquee picture out in front. In the marquee, you know, tonight's DJ. We, it's like we're stars, you know. Um, obviously, DJs are stars now, but in a totally different way, you know. Yes. I mean, yes. the, the whole rave scene and the whole, it, there's just so much going on. 
uh, uh, DJs are producers now and everything like that. This was in the early days of DJ nightclub DJ. Sure. And, uh, um, you know, we helped in introduce, uh, the, the, the world of rap to, uh, the music scene here in Los Angeles. And, yes. you know, when, when I was hired, disco was, was the big thing, but then, uh, the new wave era came about and that's when, you know, like the police and, you know, the, the, uh, Berlin and all these new new wave bands um, hit the scene. We helped break them in the Los Angeles dance scene. So there was a lot going on. There was a lot of drinking going on. There was a lot of drugging going on, too. Um, sure. You know, that was that was the, the Wild West, so to speak, yeah. uh, back in those days. But I survived. <laughs> and I thrived, and the owner of the club chain was uh, was was my mentor, and gave me the opportunity to work with some of the most cutting edge of the time, tech technically cutting edge editing equipment, video equipment. I was producing radio spots. I was producing in house video promos, um, all of this stuff. And when and you you mentioned something about playing music, it's not just playing music. You right. program music. Yes. And, and uh, I was programming the music, everything for Sunday brunch, the kind of music that you hear in the background. Yes. To uh, happy hour music, what kind of music is played for happy hour, and yes. then what kind of music is played from seven to nine, and then what kind of music is played from nine to two. So there was different times and different purposes of programming music, and I learned yes. all of this um, through with my time with that nightclub chain. And like I said, I was with them for sixteen years, and uh, that's where I cut my teeth on the business of music. So in '93, when the club closed down that's when i started my own business yeah you know i you 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 made a good point in regards to the dj piece because the reason why i say you know it's easy to play music because nowadays you got spotify right and oh, yeah. when it's time to actually play music from back in the day and when you had vinyl you had to know the music in and out in order to know how to mix that and blend that together but you also hit a good point when you actually had brunch or you had like brunch time, you had the afternoon time and you had the night time. Those genres of music is totally different. Totally different. Totally, totally different. different. Because because you use music almost to help program the customer. Yes. You know, and yes. you do it in a subliminal way. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, it's very interesting. It, it, there's, uh, there's so much that goes into how our customer or a participant feels everything from the temperature of the room yes. to the kind of lighting that's being used to the kind of music that's being played to the volume that it's being played at. All of these things have a huge influence on how a person feels yeah. and how a person feels is how that person is going to react to, to their environment. So um, it, it, it gets pretty deep and psychological and all that stuff, but I learned all of this way back when, and it really helped me uh, when I went into other branches of the entertainment business. You know, I and and I, I love it because that always like I'm sure there was what in the household where in your household was there always music being oh, played yeah. like from your parents and and things like oh, that. Yes. Oh yes, yes. Um, <laughs> way way back when, um, it, it's it's kind of funny. Uh, the very first thing I ever did, I was 15 years old. Um, when I was 14, I went to this festival, this music festival. I, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. So it was in Anchorage, Alaska. I went to this festival. It was called the First Annual People's Festival. The next year, I found out that they weren't producing a festival. And I, again, I was 15 and I went, nobody's doing this. I think I'll do it. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I couldn't do or could do. I just knew that okay let me try so through the um, donations from the city and local businesses i did the alaskan version of woodstock um okay. 12 lands and 12 hours on two flatbed trucks in downtown anchorage alaska and the very next day i had the full page of the anchorage daily news um a huge picture of my event saying this thing was great this happened and blah 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 and then 
it, and I and I realized and went, I think I know what direction I'm going to go in in life. Yeah. So that's when I decided I'll go in the entertainment direction. You know. Sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was 15 at the time. That's but, beautiful, yeah. man. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Brent Harvey. That was, that, the is awesome. I, that was the very first thing I ever produced. But, um, you know, um, it started me on, on a long path. You know, I think that's that's a beautiful thing, right? Because you had the foundation. You had the foundation of motivation to keep something going. That's yeah. number one. That was kind of like you starting your entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. You're like, listen, if somebody's going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it at a young age because now... I mean, we're going to talk about what you're doing now, but it's kind of like you build, you had that building block, right? You started off oh, at yeah. the festival and then you became a DJ and then you were doing that for like 16, well, in that entertainment business for like 16 years. And then after that, you also was in the band. So you was in the band as well too, am I correct? Before, before I was a DJ, that's how I left Alaska. I was working underage in a nightclub and I was the guy doing the lights and sound and playing records in between band sets that was before djs were even a thing right um, sure. and sure. and the band and the band said we like what you're doing will you go on the road with us and be our roadie and i said sure they didn't know i could play guitar sing and play piano and a little bit of trumpet but right. while i was on the road with them they started inviting me up on stage to play songs with them and oh, i would really? play the eagles with them and you know all sorts of stuff and then i became a member of the band and that's how i wound up in Los Angeles, we toured Canada and Northwestern United States. And that's sure. how I wound up at the Red Onion in Redonda Beach. The band broke up. And that's when the owner said, hey, you want a job as a DJ? And I said, OK, because me as a young man, I had I had no fear. Right. You were no strong. Fear. You was a Spartan. That's what it felt like. You was a Spartan. You know, yeah. it's a business. business. That's hot. I like that. Well, you know, that's that's what I tell artists and and and. That's what I tell people that want to break into the industry is you, 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 you can't have self-made barriers. You can't right. have fear. Right. You know, um, I'm human. I have fear, but I overcome it. Yeah. I like to think I overcome it. it sure. You know, I'm very trepidatious sometimes about doing something, but then I make up my mind and go, okay, you're just going to do it. Uh, even if you stub your toe, you're going to do it. Yeah. So um, that's that's how I approach things, and that's how that's how I started my own business. You know, I, I, it, when I left the the nightclub chain for sixteen years, I could have gone to work for another one and put on a suit and just done what everybody else did, or sure. I decided to eat beans for a while and start my own business. There so I started my own business, and that was that um, um, artist management and event production business, KBH Entertainment. So, nice. Congratulations yeah. on that, sir. Congratulations <laughs> on that. We got a few people that said hello to you. Uh, Joy Rio says hello. Simon, uh, Simeon Henderson, he says hello to everybody on the show. Kimberly Ward Music, she actually says hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to share this. Because we already have my man, Brent Harvey, in on the show as far as with us. Let's get to that next question, sir, because this rolls into what you're doing. Yes. When you thought about the process of, uh, of coming up with Hollywood Music and Media Awards, when did that click in? About 13 years ago, my ex-partner, who I no longer work with, but at the time he said, would you help me produce an award show? And I said, what kind? He said, independent music awards. And I rolled my eyes and I went, oh my God, not another one. Uh, because, you know, there were independent music awards, but they really didn't do anything. Uh, there were a lot of vultures out there that were just trying to suck money out of independent music artists that were just trying to get noticed by anybody, you know? Cool. And I said, and... <clears throat> Excuse me. At the time, I was working with licensing music and music catalogs. And the way that people were discovering music wasn't the old days of radio and tower records. They were discovering music through film, television, commercial advertisements, video games, all sorts of visual mediums. And I realized that you have all these award shows for music, you know, like the Grammys, American Music Awards, Billboard, blah, 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 all that stuff based on the sales and radio play and whatever. And then you have all the 
film and TV awards like the Golden Globes, the Oscars and Emmys and all that kind of stuff, but nothing in the middle that celebrated the music of visual mediums, of how people were discovering music. Sure. So I came up with the concept of recognizing best song or best score in every visual medium. And that's why I was very specific with the with the title Hollywood Music in Media, because it means music in all forms of visual media. Okay. And uh, and I know I know the importance and the weight of the word Hollywood outside the city limits of Los Angeles. Sure. <laughs> uh, because it's a very recognizable word sure. around the world. Yes. So um, so I started doing this 13 years ago, and about six or seven years ago, um, we started to really gain a lot of momentum because our nominees and winners um, became the nominees and winners of the Golden Globes, the Oscars, the Grammys, and so on and so forth in the music categories. Um, so now we're seen by the industry as the as the actual predictor of the music award categories of the Golden Globes and Oscars. Um, so our our winners of best score and best song go on to win the Oscars, Golden Globes, and Grammys. You know, wow. so um, and, and and I was I was very specific of when the awards took place because I wanted them to take place the week before Thanksgiving, because from Thanksgiving through the first week of January, the entire, the entire entertainment industry takes, takes off for vacation, right? right? So I wanted to be the last thing before the big vacation of the entertainment industry. And now um, the industry goes, oh, wait a minute, here's our chance to have to have an FYC campaign of real merit with a Hollywood Music and Media Awards nomination or win that we can carry into the major award season. So, so anyway. let me ask you a question. Um, so it brings up a, um, a point in my head in regards to, so the independent artists, when you actually, well, I'm sure a lot of independent artists because of the position that you're in, they come to you. And when they come to you, is there a specific requirement that you actually have for that independent artist in media or whatever category that is to be able to well, work with you? Yeah, for, for the first 10 years or so, um, I wanted to include independent music artists in the show uh, just so that they could get exposed to the inter, uh, to the uh, music licensing machine of Hollywood. Okay. And the, the awards have blown up to the point where the networks and studios are dominating the awards. Sure. And I, and I knew this day would come which is why I'm debuting the first Hollywood Independent Music Awards in 2023. Um, and, at, and at those awards, it's going to be the same level of production that the HMMAs are. Um, and uh, um, for example, with the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, we we're the first award show to have categories for outstanding music supervision. Because at the time, I, it, I knew how important that was. But nobody knew what music supervisors really did. Right. So we helped usher that awareness into the uh, industry. And now the Emmys have categories for uh, music supervision. Yeah, yeah. The Oscars are going to have a category for music supervision too as well. So my point is I was able to connect in independent music artists with these, with, with these gatekeepers of Hollywood. And that's the, so, so that these awards really mean something because I always like to call the HMMAs or the Hollywood Independent Music Awards an, an opportunity disguised as an award show. Yes. And, um, yeah. you know, there are, there are music artists out there that continually tell me, think, Brent, because I was part of, the award show, I met so-and-so or I connected with so-and-so and now I'm doing this, now I'm in the movies or now I'm in TV or I have management and a, a publicist or whatever the case may be. Um, my event uh, actually provides uh, a connection, a bridge for independent music artists into the world of professional um, music industry, so. 
Mr. Harvey, I must work. say, I it's, must a say work. it's a lot no of work, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I know. It has to be because of the one biggest thing that you're doing is connecting people into a world that they are not used to, but you're also connecting people into a world to be able to help them understand what they should be able to look out for, yeah. but also helping them to continue to strive to be the best they can actually be. Yeah. So you're actually, you're, you're the key, right? You are the key to the opening of the real world, right? Of music and also in different categories, right? Categories. Yeah. yeah. But you're taking it, I, I think you're taking it a, a, a deeper level. I never thought about music supervision. Like you never would think about that. Like you, because those are the people in the back end that's supervising the, mu the musicians or maybe the artists or the they're, music. They're, oh. they're the ones responsible for finding and licensing those music tracks that you hear on TV and film. Yes. A person actually does that. Yes. And those, those are music supervisors, you know? Who and a music, su a music supervisor can, can make a band a star. Yes. Placing them in the right thing, in the, yeah. in the right spot of a TV show or a film, you know? Wow. That's, that, and that, that's, and I think that's why you have that super key right there. You had the super golden key of being, of like, because you also was a music super, uh, supervisor as well. Am I correct? No, no, no. No, no I, I, I've worked with music supervisors. Okay. But I never have been a music supervisor. But you no, understand that, the process. Yeah, no, I understand the process. I understand the job. I understand the work. Uh, I, I understand what goes into it. Yes. You know, I, was giving you, I was giving you some extra credit. That's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, believe me, I, I do enough. I do enough. <laughs> Why not add another title, sir? <laughs> yeah, right. okay. so, I mean, I, you know, that's that's love. I mean, that's love. I have to say, you know, it, it it's a humble thing that you're doing. And you know how we say, you know, we, we do things for the community, right? We do things to be able to inspire people as far as in the community. You're touching people from every community that you have no idea what you're doing. You're feeding them some really great positive things and making it happen for them. It's not just say, hey, you know what? I think about signing you. I'm thinking like a label director or a label uh -huh. artist and stuff like that. You're putting them into a play of, hey, Mr. Harvey, I have this song I need you to listen to. And Mr. Harvey says, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to it, but I got, I got a team. I got some music supervisor I need to take a look at. That's either yay, or it's like you're not ready yet. Keep going right. and move forward, right? right? But you're the key. You're the golden key. Like well, you know, the the basic the basic truth is the way I define my success is the success of others. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so that's, easy. it's that easy. Yeah, and that's so, the beauty. That's the beauty about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's it sounds funny, but it's true. It's yeah. true. <laughs> you love what you do, and you can definitely tell. You can definitely yeah. tell you love what you do. And, and we love you because of what you do, because especially me. I love what you do because I'm always helping to expose great people that's doing good things in a positive way. And that's the whole objective, and that's what you're doing. And that's you've been right. doing that for years. You've yes. been making people smile for years when you were yes. DJing, when you was in the band, and also yeah. when the owner said, hey, I need a hey, hey, Brent, I need you to come and work for me. You're making me happy. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll make you happy a little bit more. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. so famous artists. Let's talk about that. You okay. Know? Um, so who are the famous artists that you actually work with or work for? Oh, my goodness. Where do I start? Um, I mean, back in the old days when I was uh, booking clubs, um, you know, I was booking bands like Deftones and Sublime and you know, before they exploded. Um, so so I have that experience. And then, of course, the the big marquee names. I mean, I, you know, I book fundraisers and in corporate shows and things like that. So. You know, I um, like Foreigner, I put them in their first gig nice. when they reformed um, with Jason Bonham on drums. Um, and, um, uh, you know, Dennis Quaid and his band. Uh, Dennis Quaid? 
Oh, Dennis Quaid and the Sharks, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and, I didn't even know uh, that. The Family Stone. Um, uh, shoot, who else? Uh, Eddie Money. I, I mean, you know, just the names go on. Uh, and, and then, of course, I have a lot of uh, uh, artists that participate in my award show, like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. Um, Diane Warren, uh, Rita Wilson, who's the actress. She's actually performing our show this year. Um, and, you know, there's there's some, you know, I, I hate to really name drop, you know, but there's there's just a, a few just names a right there. Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's always about September, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those, those, those guys are so cool. Uh, they're, they're so supportive. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, so I, I love them, and they they love what we do. So yeah. you know, and they, and they keep us they keep us smiling. They keep yeah. us smiling like you do. You know what I mean? You keep us smiling with these independent artists. So let's talk about your next project. We got a few more minutes left. I, I knew yeah. it was gonna go back fast, Mister Harvey. I knew okay. it was gonna go back fast. Let's okay. talk about your new project. So you got a new project that's coming up for next year, correct? Talk to us about that. Um, well, as I mentioned before, the Hollywood Music and Media Awards have uh, been dominated now by the studios and networks, and I really don't have the bandwidth uh, to really recognize independent music as I really want to, because sure. uh, there's so much of it out there. It's not just United States artists. This okay. is music from around the world. Okay. And, um, and so to have all the music genres rec uh, recognized, I need an entire platform and production just for that. Wow. So the Hollywood Independent Music Awards are going to debut next year uh, in Hollywood with the same production value as the Hollywood Music and Media Awards. Um, yeah. And, uh, of course, there'll be performances. There'll be uh, industry participation, just like uh, at the the HMMAs and uh, and the whole idea is to give a real opportunity to real talented artists uh, the opportunity to meet people that will make a difference in their lives um, right here in Hollywood. So there will be uh, artists coming in from all over the world uh, to uh, to Hollywood for the show. Yes. And I'm also doing some satellite events. Uh, for example, in Owensboro, Kentucky, it's the home of uh, the Bluegrass Hall of Fame. Nice. They're going to be, uh, they're going to represent the bluegrass category there um, okay. in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, uh, Cairo, Egypt wants to do the world category, world music category. So we'll do an event in Cairo as well. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, and there's a chance that we'll do um a latin music event in colombia so, let's go yes so uh there's there's some there's some things on the horizon that are happening um but right now the focus is the actual award show happening uh probably the last week of august first week of august of next year okay well mr harvey you you know who you're talking to it's just me the joker right now but also rico <laughs> Rico no suave. And yeah. you know, I would love to, you know, I, I I'm always open to to help host the show. So if you're ever in need of someone to be able to host the awards, I could be your man. You well, know? So, who knows? You may be a part of it. You know, we, we have multiple presenters at our award show. So we'll I will see. Love that. I will I'll make sure I, I'll make sure my real mask is on. So not this one, my real one. <laughs> I, I don't make, I never make promises that I yeah. can't keep, uh, but I will be open to the idea. How about that? I appreciate that, sir. That means a lot to me, of course. You know that, Mr. Harvey. It means yeah. a lot to it means a lot to me. So we're down to one more minute. Any inspirational words for independent artists that's actually coming up that you can actually give them? to help them succeed? Oh, well, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure they hear this all the time is, you know, don't give up, but, but also, um, you know, if somebody asks me for my honest opinion about something, I ask them, are you sure you want my honest opinion? Sure. Because I'm going to give it to you. 
yes, and sir. it may not be exactly what you want to hear, sure. but it will be what you need to hear. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, the business is not always kind and it's not always nice. Um, you have to have real talent to be successful on a business level in this business. Yes. You can be successful as the backyard bot mitzvah music artist. That's, that's a form of success too. Yeah. You know? But to be a worldwide pop star on the biggest label in the world and all that stuff that takes so much work it and does. so much luck. And so much good timing. Yeah. And a lot of things need to come together. It's kind of like winning the lotto. You yeah. know? It, <laughs> yes. There's a lot of things that need to happen in order for that to happen. But there's a lot of different levels of success. Yeah. So reaching obtainable goals that you set for yourself, that's a level of success. And be be content with that. Yeah. And, and once you reach a level of success, yeah. go for another level. Yes. That's, that's what I've done all my life is yes. go for the next level. Yes. Find an opportunity, find a void and fill it. Yes. You know, I like that, Mr. Harvey. I really love that. And that's really good because it's it's good information to let people know about where where they might not be at the right time. Is that not yet? Yeah. If they want to be criticized, right? I mean, if they want to be critiqued, and, and normally sometimes internally we're our own, you know, worst critique, but coming from you or coming from someone that's in the industry, when someone asks you that question and they might not accept it, but they have to learn from it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's really key in regards to that information. I, I'm, I'm never mean to anybody, no, but, I, but, cool. I'm, but I'm always honest. And, yeah. and, I, and I always make sure that they want pure honesty from me. And if that's what they want, that's what they'll get. So that's it. That's the only thing I'll promise. Mr. Harvey, I have to say, I saw your, your reaction when I first came on the screen and you, you got scared. I saw your reaction. And then all of a sudden you was like, oh, this guy really showed me what he really looks like. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about the smile, baby. That's right, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Man, no problem. Mr. Hobby, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Everybody put your hands together. I will be talking to you soon, sir. You take okay. care, okay? Ciao. Ciao. Everybody, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. That was my man, Brett Harvey, with us today. Happy Halloween. Para todos, mi gente. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Heart of Hollywood Magazine interview series. Louis Green, thank you so much for checking in. Ricky Ortiz, thank you for so much for checking in. Gabriel Ranel, gracias, papá. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we're back again next Monday for another great interview series here on the Heart of Hollywood Magazine. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go to YouTube. Heart of Hollywood Magazine. I'm sorry. Yeah, ho I'm sorry. Heart of Hollywood Media. Facebook, Heart of Hollywood Magazine. Until next time, everybody. I'll see you guys later. Trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs>